Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part three of building Bender, the real walking, talking robot. Bender is being built on my Robot X series, which is a real walking robot. And have a look in my channel to see that working. I'm still waiting for some new leg motors to get this working properly. So hopefully after this episode of Bender, the next Robot X will be actually getting it working. And then we can converge and put Bender back on all the cosmetics and have him walk along as well. So we've been building Bender's cosmetics for the last two episodes to get his head working with his head animatronics, his arms and everything working. And this episode is basically polishing off, sanding down and painting the head, doing some bits of paint touch up, making sleeves for his arms and syncing up animatronics and sounds. The first thing I need to do is take Bender's head to pieces and sand down all the 3D print lines. So this was printed on the Lulzbot Moore Struder in PLA with a 1.2mm nozzle. It still took quite a while, but it is quite crude. We've got quite a lot of seam lines between the pieces. So we need to take all the animatronics out, sand it down and paint it up. There's all the animatronics and bits and pieces discarded on the floor, but look back on the first part to see how that all works. And here are all the parts I need to sand down. So I've glued some tabs inside to uh, bridge the seam line there, just to make sure that's strong enough when I start grinding away at it so it doesn't fall to bits. We need to put some masking tape over the pivot for the mouth carousel. Apart from that, we can get on with the sanding. <laughs> So I bought one of these mouse sanders, uh, but the problem is I think don't think it's actually really sanding it. It just seems to be melting the plastic because um, PLA is quite a low melting point, And obviously this moves really fast. So the friction is just melting it. There's also some quite big lumps on here. I need to fill some as well. So I think I'm going to start with a much coarser paper and move it slowly by hand. <laughs> That's better, but it's going to take quite some time. So actually where the lines are stacked up more vertically, it's not so bad. It's really just that contour that's quite crude where there are steps in the build lines. So uh, most of this won't be too bad to stand down. It's just that contour really. So uh, that's not too bad really. We just need to fill in the odd spot and take the uh, 0.6 mil build lines out. Right, I think that's probably as sanded as it gets. I've uh, gone over all of it, got rid of the nasty seam lines. So there are some things that are still there, but those are mostly dips that will need filling. So I'm going to throw some primer at it and uh, see what it looks like. So that's filler applied to all of them. So now I'm just going to go over and uh, sand that off again and give it another coat of primer. So here it is after some more primer. There's still a few blemishes in the head and some minor things. I've got rid of most of the nasty seam lines now though between the sections. So I'm pretty happy with that. I could go over it again, but for now I've run out of gray primer, so I'm gonna leave as it is. The next thing is to paint the inside here black and get it reassembled. As well as painting the inside of the eye surround and those white servos black, I've also painted Bender's eyes with just a bit of yellow acrylic so they match the mouth better. I did want to lighten both of these up to a pale yellow, but I can't find any lighting gel the right colour, so I've just matched them for now. Um, and I think that's probably going to have to do. Right, well I think that looks much better with the eyes matching at least, even if they are the wrong colour yellow. Obviously there is a seam line around the top of his head where it's removable for access. Uh, but I think that's going to be okay. I'm printing the aerial for Bender's head in Ninja Flex, so it's nice and flexible, and if it hits anything, then it doesn't snap off. There we go. Probably need to try and make it the same colour grey, but I'll probably paint that up with Plasti Dip so it's flexible. Last time I made Bender's flexible arms, which uh, basically have these flexible sections and servos that pull pulleys. Um, I'm pretty sure this bends in the wrong place though. It should bend at the elbow, but it's actually bending in the middle of his forearm. So I'm going to move this upper section 
and make the hand and wrist a section longer. So here's Bender's original arm assembly CAD in Fusion 360 and the parts I need to make now for the hand which is all the parts on the left hand side here. So um, we've got this kind of uh, deep wrist that will take the place of two of these sections, a soap dish thing that makes the oval that Bender's hand is actually attached to, a plate which fits into that at the surface and then some fingers and you'll notice there's some holes through this plate. The fingers are again going to be ninja flex so they're flexible and we'll put some twisty ties through there so that we can actually uh, pose them and make them grip things. So here we are back on the Lulzbot Mini with the Flexi Struder printing that in Ninja Flex. It's doing about 20 millimeters a second because it has to go pretty slow. So we're looking at around an eight hour print for each set of fingers. So there we go, there's one of them. Obviously it's all quite flexible so we can stick those twisty ties in the bottom and actually pose the fingers or bend them slightly or whatever so you can actually grip things. And we're gonna spray all of that up with gray Plasti Dip so it's rubber coated and flexible and hopefully a bit of a lighter grey. Of course I mean darker and it's much darker than I thought it was. So um, it's actually dried much darker unfortunately. So we've kind of got a twin tone bender but it is extremely hard wearing stuff Plasti Dip. Um, so that'll be really good. I've done the fingers in the same thing which have come out pretty well. But of course they are a slightly darker grey and I can't really use the same grey paint because it's not flexible. The plan for the fingers was to put these twisty ties shoved inside which you can kind of bend and they stay there. But actually the fingers, now I've glued the uh, Ninja Flex piece down to the flat ABS part just with super glue, actually they're really rigid and they're really good at gripping things so I don't think they need anything inside. Um, in fact I can jam something in there like a bottle of beer if I had one and he'd hold that pretty well. So I think I'm just going to leave them like that basically and of course this part goes inside the soap dish part which attaches to the end of the arm and that makes Bender's hands. So I've now moved this arm up a section and I cut off a piece of the nylon and we've lost one of the black discs and we've lost one of the grey discs in place of this part so now the hand will go on the end of the arm there and of course this section is longer so it makes the arms the same length it just moves the elbow up slightly so there's the soap dish part that will go on the end there. So he's still actually got quite long arms. I can't find any conduit or anything to cover those arms with that's just the right size and is flexible and light enough. So I'm just using some poly cotton fabric and I've just drawn on it with a black marker and I'm just going to make some fabric sleeves for now. I'm lazy so I'm using some iron on repair tape stuff which uh, just sticks the fabric there. So I've turned it inside out and just put a seam line up there. So turning it back out the other way, obviously that makes a nice neat seam line which goes all the way down the back. So there we go, it's a bit lumpy and stuff but it does actually give him his range of motion there so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, if I can find something better then I'll probably replace it. At the moment in the UK we don't really have much dryer tube because most of the dryers are condensing ones where the moisture condenses and drips away down the drain so there's not that much to choose from. I have got some conduit but it's much bigger so finding exactly the right size is really hard as well but it will do for now. I've made some special hinges, this piece fits inside onto the frame just to the edge of where the door is and then these will allow the door to actually hinge around that cosmetic skin so that I can actually open the door wide enough. Right those hinges fit in just there so that seems to work pretty well so I just need to glue my door on now. I've glued that onto the door so that seems to work pretty well. I've kind of off-centered it here so you can see that it's Bender's door Obviously I don't want to draw a thick black line around it so I've just left it there so we can see that it's actually a door. I've made a piece to mount the head here which is another big PLA print with the Moore Struder and that's got some keys that lock into the bottom here so eventually this piece will be clamped down to the frame. I've got some screw holes, there'll be some clamps on the bottom and then these interlock and then there'll be zip ties zip tied from the inside to hold his head on. I think that's going to be okay, I'm not going to actually attach it for now. Hopefully I don't need to run any more metal from the inside. We'll have to see how it goes when it walks to check that, that um, the head is quite top heavy so we need to check that actually holds the head on and the body frame is capable of supporting it but I think it's going to be okay. I'm pretty happy with the way he looks but now it's time to get some sounds in and sync up those animatronics. So I've sorted out some sounds, I've ripped some sounds off YouTube and I've put them on the Adafruit soundboard which is the 2 meg version. And I've got two speakers here, they're 4 ohm speakers which I've wired in series to give 8 ohms. And I've got a TDA 2030 amp here and that's got a little volume control on board. It's actually a 20 watt amp which is far too big but that's alright because we can turn it down. So now every time I ground one of the wires on here it should play a different sound. Bite my shiny metal ass. And it will go round and round in a loop. Whoa, mama. I think, Get a room, you two. I think that there are nine sounds. Wait a minute. 
and it will go round and round. So now we need to install that in the body and we need to sync that up with the mouth motions and get some random arm motions going. I've mounted the speakers in the front of him facing down there and those are on brackets solvent welded to the frame inside the body. I was going to try and put them higher up but there isn't really anywhere else to let the sound out, at least the bottom of this is open. There's some hacky wiring here that now powers the arms and the head and all of that will need sorting out when I rewire the whole robot when I put the new actuators in. Eventually the features for speaking and the head and the arm motions will be driven by this remote which is the one that controls the walking robot. But for now they're not, they're just driven by these wires at the back and I've got one trigger for the head features and the speech which cycles round and another one for the body. Break my colossal metal ass! Your mama! Yeah, no need to worry. Break my shiny metal ass! Whoa, mama! Get a room, you two! Wait a minute. I'll be right back. You think you could survive a 700 foot fall? <laughs> uh oh. I'm happy enough with that for now. At the beginning, I said we're going to build a walking talking Bender, and of course, Bender is built on my Robot X project, which is a walking pair of robot legs. Next time, we're actually going to come back to Robot X and put the new actuators in, which will hopefully have arrived by then so we can make it walk in a much more stable fashion. Then there will be one more episode for Bender where we put the cosmetics back on, and that's more of a presentation video about building Bender and seeing him walking and talking. And of course, I'll be covering the legs uh, once I've got those actuators in and I know what physical size they are, probably similar fashion to the arms. After that, we'll be building some more characters on the legs, so if you've got any ideas, put those in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. You should also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Alright, that's all for now.